Hey guys, if you're like most men out there, you have been left a little bit confused and perhaps a whole lot anxious about what's going on with AI, how quickly it's approaching, and especially how it's going to affect the nature of men relating to women going forward. You know, online dating, even offline dating, finding information about you, uh, creating AI girlfriends themselves even. Well, what's a guy to do? I have a brand new audio program with a transcript for you that you can download at mountaintoppodcast.com front slash AI for about the price of lunch. And this audio program hits the ground running. It's absolutely fluff free. And in a relatively brief amount of time, my promise to you, my guarantee, if you will, is that you'll be absolutely up to speed with all things AI, even as most other guys are left in the dust still wondering what's going on. This audio program is called Women and AI, and it's brand new this week, released around the same time this podcast is dropping. It's there for you to download immediately at mountaintoppodcast.com front slash AI. And now let's get to a great episode with my returning guest, who's very smart and a whole lot of fun, the one and only Lauren Zander. <laughs> Live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters, you're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. All right, gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. As always, my name is Scott McKay. I am your host at Scott McKay on Twitter, on TikTok on YouTube, on just about every social media platform out there. Instagram is the only outlier. I'm at Real Scott McKay there. And I guess, you know, by proxy, I'm also at Real Scott McKay on threads as well. The Mountaintop Summit is the Facebook group that everybody who's listening to this show is joining in droves. And guys, you should be there too, because we have a lot of fun. The website is mountaintoppodcast.com, where you can get on my calendar to talk to me for free for 25 or 30 minutes about what's on your mind. I'm exactly who you expect me to be, and I look forward to talking to you. Also, you can download a free copy of my book, Sticking Point Solved, which covers just about every situation you can possibly imagine, and then some when it comes to sticky situations with women in your life. Onward. With me today is a returning guest. It's been a few years since she's been on, and she's a lot of fun, and we had a great show the first time, so I have no idea what took me so long. Her publicist got a hold of me, and I was like, yes, yes, indeed. I'd love to have Lauren Zander back on my show. And when I heard about the topic that's most on her mind lately, I doubled down. I was like, we got to get this show done. So we're going to be talking about seven ways people lie. And my returning guest from Croatia nowadays, which is an underrated, beautiful place on the Dalmatian coast, especially. Lauren Zander, welcome back. Thank you very much from Croatia. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I love it here. So uh, when did you actually move over to Croatia? I've actually been here for a year. I got divorced. And then uh, because of my career, I can work anywhere. For sure. And so um, I haven't been that happy with the United States. So um, nothing personal, everyone who loves the U.S. Um, but I wanted to go abroad. And I was searching for what I'm calling love and country. I had to love the country in order to care about finding love. And so I was traveling the world and I got to Croatia and I loved Croatia and uh, have been dating a great man ever since I got here. Wow. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a year. I've been here a year. You've been there a year. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful part of the world. Like I said, Europeans are well versed in how lovely places like Dubrovnik are, you know, and split. Mm -hmm. Most Americans uh, kind of like we haven't discovered Crete or really the Balearic Islands in the United States, Europeans all go to those places on vacation routinely. And mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a well-kept secret from Americans, right? It's, um, I'm on the island of Korchula, and uh, its claim to fame is this is where Marco Polo is from. And uh, it's, it's just 
it's, you know, it's water everywhere. It's beautiful. And the food's good. And are you allowed to open your eyes when you're swimming? Um, I wouldn't know. Well, I Marco don't. Polo's from there. You know, obviously, if you're swimming around, you got to play Marco oh, Polo. Oh, you're very funny. I missed yeah. it. Marco. Okay. Uh, you're right. You're totally right. <laughs> don't tell me you didn't play that swimming pool game when you were a kid. I did. Yeah. I did. I really did. I just didn't know I was going to end up living where he came from. Yeah. I mean, you are in the capital of Marco Polo worldwide. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So enough about me. Today, we're going to talk about seven ways people lie. Now, seven is a lucky number, but you've come up with seven ways people lie. And, you know, these are guys who are looking to get better with the women in their lives. So Uh, since you didn't use a gender specific descriptor there, I'm going to make a brave assumption. You're talking about men and women lying in seven different ways, regardless of their gender. Correct? Absolutely. This is not. This has no sex involved. Well, no sex is a lie right there. Well, this is how we all lie. Okay. I would say we all, all us humans lie. And, um, and then the biggest problem with this list of lies is most people will argue it's a good idea to lie. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess on that note, you have told me that you're a truth teller. Mm -hmm. And your website describes you as upholding a take no prisoners brand of radical personal accountability. So I can Mm -hmm. only imagine that you're telling us the truth about lies, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that's a good foundation to start from. What's the first one, Lauren? Okay. I'm going to start from the easiest, the ones people most think are a good idea. Um, all the way down to the not such a good idea ones. Um, so the first one I'm going to say is white lies, social grease. Okay. You look great. You look great. It's so good to see you. Oh my God. When was that? It's, oh my, you, I want, are you, did you lose weight? All of those, everybody who social greases. How's your day? It's, oh, I'm having such a good day. Today's great. How are you? All of those. Kind of how we make small talk with people and in this culture, especially if someone asks how you're doing, it's a greeting, not an honest question demanding an honest answer. The proper way to respond to how are you doing is I'm fine. How are you? Regardless, that kind of thing, right? I mean, I don't I don't know where that was written, but, um, you know, I do believe that there is a total agreement in the world that everyone socially greases you know, means everybody's friendly and kind, whether you're happy or not happy or whether you even like the person or not. So I do believe lying happens right at that very second. And, you know, you're talking about white lies here, which everybody does because they think telling the actual unfettered truth in certain situations would be socially disastrous and definitely a bad idea. Hence why movies like Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey are so funny. Right. Mm. Yeah, I mean, though, though I do have a promise, I don't lie, and I don't even lie in that second. So it is possible to not even do white lies. It is possible. How does that go? Well, I happen to like people, so it's not usually the problem of I don't want to talk to anybody, right? So I'm actually kind of a, you know, hi, how are you kind of girl, and I mean it. Um, But I just won't lie. Like, how's your day? Uh, I actually think and answer the question, but you can still answer one word answers, right? Uh, Decent, right? You don't have to lie. You can actually be more present with people even at the get go. And you can kind of be honest without going into the lugubrious details, right? Like it's there. You, <laughs> Today is yeah, happening. Yeah, no one has to be interested. No, no one has to be interested. It actually, the moment you're honest with someone, it's alarming and they're more present with you. That's kind of true, isn't it? It takes mm-hmm. them by surprise. It's it's authentic, right? It's it's like a killer second, right? I can get someone to look me deeper in the eye just by not having a pat answer. Yeah, it gets them engaged. It's kind of like uh it's kind of like a shock to the system because it's a pattern interrupt when someone's actually honest with you. It is. Yeah. So I have this theory. There are two kinds of people. Ready? Mm-hmm. There are yes. people who like to piss on each other's leg and tell each other it's raining. 
And there are mm-hmm. people who will be blunt and tell you exactly what they think. And I think I have this theory that both kinds of people prefer the company of people exactly like themselves and resent the other kind of people. And it kind of sorts itself out socially like that. What do you think? Oh, I've never thought of that like a, like it mattered or at all. Um, <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. You see how I get away with it? Yes, right. Um, you see, because because as long as I don't lose what is true for me, which is that you're adorable and a neat guy, and I want to connect with you, I don't have to lie. I see. Well, at least I feel better about myself already because Lauren Xander thinks I'm neat and adorable. I, that's good. I do. It's true. And back at you, right? Thank you. Okay, so what I mean is there are people all over Twitter who just lie to each other all day. And they don't want the truth. They just want an echo chamber of people who are trying to get along and tell each other they agree with each other. You know, the people who will blow smoke up your kilt and all that good stuff. Meanwhile, there are people who just tell you the way it's going, the way it is. You know where you stand with all of them. You don't have to guess. And I think there are basically people who like to be part of one crowd or the other. And the other Hmm. crowd can't understand why these other people are the way they are. I mean, how can they be like that? It's just makes no sense. That's all. I mean, here in Texas, people are blunt and they kind of tell you what they mean. Uh, Where I come from back east in the middle Atlantic states, uh, people tend to blow smoke up each other's kilts and, (laughs) you know, play this game of social graces, even when it's not necessary. And Californians are famous for that, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah, I'll have that ready for you tomorrow afternoon. Just give me a call. Whereas they have no intention of having it ready for you tomorrow afternoon. The guy in Texas right. will go, you know, I know you're expecting this thing tomorrow afternoon, but I'm going to need at least a week, Bubba. And the guy's like, all right, well, thank you for being honest. Now I don't have to, like, leave you voicemail messages for seven days wondering where this thing you promised me was. I'll just come back in a week and we're Gucci. Right. I think that's I believe you. And I believe you've been paying (laughs) a lot of attention to this way more than I have. Well, that's because I'm the second kind of person, (laughs) the blunt kind. And God bless Texas. But um, that sounds good. And I did have guests from Texas here um, who came to visit me and stay here with their family. And they are like very hospitable, like they're adorable, hospitable, kind, and very honest. And the kids were very honest. So I can, I can give you that one too. Right. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. So have we covered the first one adequately? Just kind of got it on the, the table. Okay. One. All right. Yes. So move on. All right. Next two easy ones, though they're different, is um, people exaggerate. That was the best party. Oh my God, I had the best time. Oh my God, I, I I sold my first company and it was such a good deal, right? They don't tell you the numbers. They You don't really know you had the best time. So this is when a person in order to make something sound good embellishes and exaggerates. So this is kind of like showing the highlight reel on Facebook. Yes, like he's such a great guy. Really, is he? Do you really think so? What makes him great? Oh, I only met him for 10 minutes, right? <laughs> so it it's just someone's personality and their personality in order to be likable uh, lies, exaggerates. So I think exaggerating is a way to lie and it loses um, your credibility. And it's kind of another type of social grease, like to get along in the world. Um, but what people don't realize is we all can sense being lied to. We don't know what it is. We don't know when it's happening. But there's something about like the instinct of whether you like someone or don't like someone. And a lot of those instincts are getting, um, they don't, you don't understand you can feel lied to. Or you like, what is it? Why are they bothering me? What is that? Like, what just happened? Right. You can you go on rides and people are taking you on storytelling rides. And so my advice is always to not lie. And so exaggerating is one and under exaggerating is another one. Under exaggerating. Under exaggerating. This is people who are hiding their money, hiding their success, hiding their happiness. These are people that are scared of the evil eye. They don't want to tell anything. Just tell people what they need to know. Yes, but under exaggerate like, oh, it was okay. It's just as much as the other way. Yeah, but it's the exact opposite direction, right? 
exact opposite because they don't want someone to be jealous. Like they actually are someone who measures, like they're actually very competitive or they're very, they're doing very well and they are scared they're going to offend. Uh So they're constantly caring about what other people think. And so they under exaggerate. Two things to add there anecdotally. Okay. I've noticed that people who are quote unquote making good money (laughs) as opposed to being genuinely wealthy will brag about their stuff, brag about their money, brag about their new BMW and the people who are genuinely wealthy, like hundred millionaires and above don't ever Mm. talk about it. They Mm. drive a Toyota Camry and they just kind of keep all that under wraps because they know better because as soon as they start bragging about all that, uh, first of all, they have nothing to prove, so they don't need to brag about that. Second of mm-hmm. all, the fewer people who know how wealthy they are, the fewer people are going to come try to hit up on them for stuff constantly so they can actually live their own life. It's kind of like if you're an A-list or B-list celebrity, you go out with like a ball cap and sunglasses on so people aren't constantly barraging you for attention. Whereas exactly. if you're that guy from that thing, you may stand around on Hollywood and Vine waiting for people to notice you and ask you for your autograph. Exactly. (laughs) That's the first thing. Second, I've noticed a trend in self-help gurus that goes something like this. Everything is going great. I'm making so much money. I'm happy. I'm fulfilled in my relationships. I'm living the dream. And then you don't hear from them anymore for like six or eight months. Then nine or 10 months from now, Everybody's everybody's thinking I'm setting this up for they were pregnant and had a kid, but that's not where I'm going. Nine or mm-hmm. ten months, twelve months doesn't matter really the time frame. They come back and say, "I want to let everybody know I've had this incredible breakthrough and I'm out the other side and I've emerged victorious." Because see, five six months ago I was hooked on heroin and I was homeless and I was in the gutter and having the worst time of my life and I was in the pit and now I have recovered and I'm back and this that and the other. You'll never know they were a heroin addict and in the pit and in the gutter because they wouldn't dare post about that. But now that they've recovered from it, hey, we're going to talk about this massive way my cheese was moved proverbially and how I've come through it and now I'm strong again. I believe, again, because of that highlight real effect. Nobody who is your friend on social media or probably even your friend in real life or at least an acquaintance wants to know the bad things that happened to you. That's reserved for people who are truly your closest friends who got your back through thick and thin. And that number of people is certainly a smaller subset than your 5,000 friends on Facebook and Twitter, right? I mean, the coaching I do because of, you know, the the method I developed is all about self-deprecating truth telling. Like I use (laughs) everything. I, I, I am not that I am not the happy go lucky. Don't tell everyone what I've been through. Yeah. You know, the first right at all. So I really don't watch other people's press. I never was good at that either. So I, you know, I live in a world where I don't think there's any competition because I'm not paying attention to it. Well, that's good. But see, that's also because you're not a liar and you don't really tolerate or are entertained by people who are lying. And then most of them are. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I, I think I actually blame that I'm like 53 and never got into it. Right. Like I, I am not the you know, I, I care about parts of it. Right. And I'm watching friends of mine, like people I love, authentically uh-huh. love. Um, but other than that, I, I actually, you know, find it doom scrolling. Right. Is the name of it. And I'm not allowed. Right. I, I'm also the thing I teach is making promises that change your life. Like if you keep that promise, you'll be happy. And if you don't freaking keep that promise, you won't. Yeah. And so I follow that, too. And so I am on a very strict diet of uh, <laughs> social media. You know, that is an excellent strategy that I think more people would do well to follow. I love mm-hmm. uh, that you mentioned this idea of doom scrolling. Meanwhile, Mm. everybody's posting their highlight reels and trying to position themselves as having this hunky-dory lifestyle, right? Meanwhile, everybody else is living in their own real world, and they're doom-scrolling, like you say, looking for Mm -hmm. schadenfreude in there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to find because people are so – well, they lack honesty, just like you said. They're all Mm -hmm. lying about this. I mean, 
it's like an error of omission instead of commission. They're telling me all the wonderful things that happened. My kid won this race, blah, blah, blah. My kid got this award. My kid is on the Dean's list. But anytime something disastrous happens, well, that doesn't make it to social media as if everything's yeah. just going great all the time. And meanwhile, everybody's just rolling their eyes disgusted by all these douchebags who talk about how great their life is when everybody knows that can't possibly be true, right? I would have to give you a yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, that is loud and true. And you did I, – I was actually going to – you said omission. I call it with, you know, omission or withholding information is yeah. one of the most um, devious ways humans lie. Like if you don't ask me, I don't have to tell you. And so that one, especially for, you know, daters is a disaster. Or people buying houses where multiple axe murders mm. were committed and they forgot to tell you that. Oh, oh, yeah. Stuff like uh, that. I guess that could be true, too. Well, that's actually a real world scenario. That's in our neighborhood. Oh, is it? We had a horrible event where a guy killed himself, his three kids, his two dogs, and Ew. his wife in the garage. And it happened probably a seven or eight iron shot from here in my neighborhood. This probably goes back four or five years now, made national news. More, more police cars than I've ever seen, et cetera, et cetera. Ouch. And my wife and I and all of our neighbors were like, they got to raise that house. That house is gone. There's no way anybody's ever going to live there again. No, nope. it was actually a rental and the owners just came, had a cleanup operation, you know, and uh, slapped a new color of paint on the front of the house. And it's been rented again and again since. But interestingly, there have been like 10 or 12 tenants in three years. <laughs> And they don't have to disclose what happened in that house in Texas. They only have to disclose it if the house is sold. Classic error of omission, right? That's really, I mean, Dark, what right? would you do if you own the house? And if it's not the law, is it omission? Well, right? the people, our neighbors on both sides have moved out. It it just could be the one place. Like if you, you know, that's business. I don't, I don't know if, if the law says you don't have to tell. That's a really interesting question. Yeah, right. Exactly. This is personal relationships, oh, right? Okay. Not this is this is personal relationships. Well, not to hijack your list, but is that one of the seven that I got to a little yeah. early? Okay, very. Yeah, good. no, no. It well, you brought it up, so I think it's a really good. It's it's one of the it's one of the ones that hurts people the most down okay. the road in their relationships. Is right. I don't ask, don't tell. Um, and then find out later and then see how that goes. So if you don't ask me whether I have an incurable STD or not, it's your fault when we have unprotected sex that you got the incurable STD because you didn't ask. Oh, um, I think that one might always be the person who didn't tell's problem because that one really has let that like goes back to you're supposed to be polite and do social grease, right? Like I think at this day and age, people do get to tell their herpy stories. But um but you know better because you're 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 in the dating scene. Right? Well, I had to make it applicable, right? <laughs> Definitely. Um, omission, omission is really the, the amount, cause I've also coached women who I coach more women than I do men on dating and, um, the amount of omission on children, like people not telling they had a kid or had been divorced. Right. And then I'm like, oh my God, you have to learn to ask all the right questions on the first date because people will figure out how to not tell that, which is, you know, crazy to me, but yes, it's true. Well, you know, you mentioned something a few minutes ago that I, I want to dig into a little deeper, and that's this idea that people generally know when they're being lied to. I don't know, Lauren. I think a lot of people, they have this truth bias, right? And mm. they want to believe something is true if they need it to be true or they would like for it to be true. This is something Malcolm Gladwell talks about very deeply in one of his newer books called Talk to Strangers. Mm -hmm. And uh, if people are wanting this truth, they will cling mm -hmm. to it. And then when they find out, oops, maybe this isn't true after all, they'll come up with a very real version of cognitive dissonance to mm -hmm. keep from accepting the truth. And I think this is how a lot of brainwashing and 
mind influence happens on Twitter and social media. People find a group of people they want to be a part of. They want to be part of something bigger. They want to belong. And even vis-a-vis their side doing the exact same wrong things the other side is doing, they want to claim that they have the virtue and the other side is always wrong. And to me, if your side's always right and the other side's always wrong, you don't have an opinion. You're part of a cult. Whichever I, side it's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're, I actually think you're totally right about that um, people don't catch other people lying. Okay. Like I, I, what I was talking about okay. was the nature of when you don't like someone. Like, I don't know why I didn't like them or I didn't feel comfortable or like is, is because they, they could be being full of shit, right? Like there's some way that person is being, and you have a bias instinctively not to like them in meeting someone face to face was what I was talking about. Yeah, okay. And some, and I was talking about their nature and their, the way they're chatting you up or the way they're talking at the table and you're sitting at a dinner and you're listening to them and you're like, why don't I like them? And they could be exaggerating with holdings, like they're managing their appearance and sure. they're, they're riddling it with lies. And what I think is a person will like someone much better if they're more honest. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty clear. Yeah. I think that yeah, point that is was well it. taken. That was yeah. It. Yeah. What's the next one? The next one is, this one's like another little delicate one. It's um, people misrepresent what's true, right? So, oh, I loved that book, right? So they want to look good in front of someone else and then they will misrepresent the truth. So you'll think I read the whole book, but I didn't really read the whole book. Or I'll pretend I know something about that country, you know, Croatia, I know something or I, oh yes, that's like, I'll agree with you. Right. I'll go along for the ride pretending I know shit that I don't know. And so I call it that's misrepresenting that you and you're lying. Right. So people will lie through misrepresentation. OK, I think that's fair enough. For example, uh, someone wants to cozy up to someone or mm -hmm. brown nose somebody. So whatever they're interested in, the person talking to them will feign interest in it as well just to earn brownie points. That's an example absolutely will say the right thing, will misrepresent, like, oh my God, that was so much fun. Or, like They will tell the story to, and it's a misrepresentation of what was happening. Or in a more delicate matter, right, in your relationship, you know, did you think she was pretty, <laughs> right? The the right answer is, well, well I, you know, I guess so. <laughs> She's a very nice girl, the one I'm setting you up with. Right. Like. Right? right. Like, but the real answer is, did you see how hot she was? Right. So it, that's misrepresenting too. Well, see the example I had hot on the tarmac was every Mr. Nice guy out there who's desperate for a date will agree with anything. Any hot girl says just in an attempt to supplicate. That is exactly misrepresenting. <laughs> it sure <laughs> it's is. Exactly. That, okay. that one. Oh that's man, one. this one's painful. What's the next one? Okay, so this one is outright lying. I didn't take the cake, right? Um, I was at the movies. I did not have sex with that woman. I did not have right, sex exactly. with that woman. <laughs> are you kidding? What do you like? <laughs> oh, that's the misrepresent when you like misre like I would never. What do you? Who do you think I am? Right. Make it like exaggerate combined with a misrepresent. Sure, exactly. Add a white lie and throw some social grease on it. Right. It's brilliant. I'm starting to put the pieces together of this puzzle and realizing that politicians are experts at all seven of these typically. Absolutely. <laughs> and they jump in between. Right. Like they yep. work beautifully together. <laughs> right. Why do one when you can do all of them? Okay, so outright lying seems like it's pretty self-explanatory. Yes, and most people think when you say lying, you're only really talking about outright lying. So one of the ways people lie is they don't think there's nuances to lying. They wow. let it be like just the big ones, right? Like just, I didn't lie. I don't lie. Oh, Which really? is a lie. <laughs> Which is a lie. Exactly. You know, whenever you take a wonderlick test... 
for a position. It's that tricky test where, you know, there are right answers and wrong answers and it's psychologically evaluating you and your fitness mm-hmm. psychologically to do whatever job, not really about what your skills are. And they'll ask questions like that. Do you ever lie about anything? And anybody who says no, obviously is lying. They're just trying mm-hmm. to earn those brownie points. You know, I can't stand tests yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of employers use them though. You know. Yeah. I don't know how much truth they're actually finding out. The whole test to me seems like it's built on a lie of not telling you what their ulterior motive is and even giving you the test, which is the irony of the whole thing. You know? Yes. Yes. I do know. So was that seventh one the one we covered no, no, or is there, there another one? No, we have one more. Okay, we go ahead. One. Okay. Last one is, oddly enough, there is a category that isn't omission or withholding information. It's called taking it to the grave. Skeletons in the closet. Secrets, right? Like Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to keep that secret, right? So that's coming to the grave with me. Shit you've done that you're taking to the grave, things you know you're taking to the grave and you believe in it, right? It's like a virtue to take that thing to the grave with you. All right. So a lot of guys are listening to all these seven really well-placed and spot-on examples of how people lie that Mm. you've given, Lauren. And they're saying, so now what do I do about all this? Am I to disclose all of this stuff freely to whoever asks from now on? Is there any kind of real plan of action I should take in order to be more judicious about when I don't exactly tell the truth? Should I tell the truth all the time? What's the practical application of all this, Lauren? Okay. So... The only way, the person you can't, if you can't tell the truth to someone and you're air quote playing them, you're managing them, you're managing your appearance with them, you're keeping them happy. The nickname for that is you're being pleasy. 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 Right. It's sleazy plus pleasing because you're not telling the truth. And people pleasers. It's a pleaser. Yeah, it's pleasy. And you want to keep someone else happy and sacrifice your own truth. Ah, I see. You're putting that person above you, like that girl, that situation, that boss. Like when you are willing to lie, who you're willing to lie for, even though you're like, it's an act of power, like I'm keeping the information, but you're actually sacrificing your truth to please Mm -hmm. whoever that person is. And if you really look at who has the power in the moment you're willing to lie, It's the other person that you're lying for. Wow, you're right. You know, this is kind of a sabotage to your own measure of good character, if that's what you're striving for. A hundred percent, right? And once you lie, you can never get out of it, right? Because you can, you can tell the truth, but then you're really a jerk, right? So, and the act of lying, right, is a huge problem, right? Because it, it never goes away for you. Right. No, my sister really liked you. That is not what she said. Yeah. When you tell the truth, you don't ever have to remember what you said to everybody and keep track and keep inventory. But when you're telling a whole bunch of lies, it gets real complicated really quickly (laughs) to keep inventory. Well, you're also you're also dealing with real life. Like, oh, I don't know if you want to hear the truth about them. Right. You don't actually have to tell the truth about anything. You can withhold your information. You just can't withhold that you're withholding it. Like, I don't want to tell you that. Like, I think like I I just wish people understood that to love yourself is to be yourself. Right. So when everybody wonders why they there's the imposter syndrome, like, why is there the imposter syndrome? I never feel real, real like the results I produce. They're just like something still disconnected. I'm like, uh, it's usually because you're a liar. Right. (laughs) It's like, you you know, it's not that tricky. You're an but you are an imposter. It's true. Yes, But, you know, that can be a little bit complicated as well, right, Lauren? I may be actually more of an expert and have greater competence than my own self-esteem will allow me to admit to myself. So in that case, at least, it isn't so much that I'm overplaying my hand. I'm underplaying it. So the exaggeration or the under-exaggeration effects can kind of piggyback onto that imposter syndrome Depending on the situation, it can go either way, right? So the way I address it is that the voices in your head, 
once you're willing to keep other people happy and be pleasy and want the world to work better and have social grease and lie and like all different forms of lying is a virtue, it really is lying to keep other people happy is the virtue, right? I don't want to tell my girl. I don't want to tell my boss. I, like I'm even going to lie. What? You didn't get the email, right? But it keeps putting the person who's lying in a, in stress, like a crazy amount of stress. And then you're then in a very serious relationship with your inner dialogue. So you and your inner dialogue are now lying to everyone in your life in little ways and big ways. Even if it's just little ways, it becomes a ready, a three person relationship. You, the person in your head that's remembering everything and managing all your information to keep the other person happy. And then the person. And my joke is it's your PR agent is dating person or going to work every day. <laughs> kind of like there's three sides to every story. Yours, mine, and the truth. This is yours, mine, and the one I'm kidding myself into trying to believe. Yes. That's okay. what I'm calling the imposter syndrome is okay. that there's this constant voice in your head managing being a liar. So again, from a practical perspective, what I hear you subtly advocating here, and I want you really to nail this home, whether I'm right yes. or wrong in this assumption, because I don't want to assume anything because I'm yeah. thinking that's probably another form of lying somehow. You're advocating not telling lies at all. Hold Zero. truth, nothing but the truth. All right. So what do I replace a white lie with to make sure I still have friends and don't become like the aforementioned Jim Carrey and liar, liar, and just disgust everybody and not be any fun at parties anymore? What do I do? I think people should be their, their real selves. So you do look fat in these jeans. Um, if someone asks, do you like these jeans? You don't need to offer info. It's, it's not withholding information if I don't walk up to you and tell you you look fat. Okay. Right. So I could just tell them what they need to know as long as it's true. Social grease is like, hi, you don't need to go, hey, oh my God, I haven't seen you. There's so many sentences people are, uh, are unnecessary, right? If people watched what they said and, and just literally cared about connecting in that moment or telling the truth, it would feel different. It would be different. It would be being yourself. Hopefully, if you have a lover or a partner, you're your real self with them. Oh, gosh, but if I you're hope fake so. with them, too, you could just start to remove the right to lie. If you remove the right to lie, you'll start to have to figure out what you would say. And it's actually kind of I've been doing this my whole career is getting people to stop lying and to actually see if they can stop lying. And it's a lot easier than than you think. Right. Because the lying is kind of exhausting. Well, let me tell you something that I think kind of goes along with what you're saying that I've discovered is that the more honest I can be with my spouse and she with me, the more liberating it is to mm. our relationship because we mm. trust each other. We actually know what's going on in each other's heads. So mm -hmm. we trust each other more. There's less jealousy. The communication is better because the trust is better. And here's the magic phrase that I always get beat up over, right? That kind of relationship is no longer something that feels like work, like, oh, it's hard work to have a great relationship. No, it's not. When you trust this person, you know what's going on in their head and you're glad they're there and you can kind of go through life better. And it feels like it's less work because you're a team than if you were going it alone. And people can't seem to wrap their heads around it. And so when I say things like when my wife comes out of the bathroom and her dress isn't really as flattering as it could be, I tell her so, and men gasp everywhere, like, Ugh, my marriage would be over. But then she comes out of the bathroom looking stunning, and I tell her that and go, hey, you know, can we just ravish each other instead of going out at all? And she giggles because she knows I told the truth. Yes. There's no guesswork there. The truth is sexy. And if you're it like, if the truth is so much sexier and there's a way to say everything, I there's a way to key. say everything. There's a way to, it's not, you look fat. It's, that's not my favorite outfit on you. Do I look fat in it? I'm like, you know, I don't, just don't love it. <laughs> See, now I think we're getting down to the crux of the matter. This is about wording and it's about tact, not about lying. It's about telling the truth and the person wants to hear it. Now, as a coach, I will tell someone they're fat. Like, I don't think that's an insult. Like, I, it's okay. Well, that's what you're paid to do is tell them the truth when everybody else lies. 
that's what I'm paid to do. So yeah. I, I don't, and you know, the, the oddest thing ever is that people are meaner to themselves than anyone could ever be. Isn't that true? Boy, is mm. that true? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation and I don't think we talk about the truth enough because, well, maybe just like the movie said, we can't handle the truth or we don't want to talk mm -hmm. about the truth. We don't want to be bothered with the truth because mm -hmm. this has been an invasive conversation. This mm -hmm. has been challenging to literally everyone who's listening to it, including to me. Mm -hmm. And it is an incredibly poignant question to ask. Can I literally stop lying and feel better about it? and have more friends and be more influential. And I think you've made a pretty good case for it. I appreciate it. Ah, thank you very much. That was exactly well, my intention. Well, that was the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know personally, and <laughs> in the interest of full disclosure, AKA truth, mm -hmm. I don't know if I personally am ever going to be able to stop telling little white lies, especially when people are a little bit psychotic or not completely all there mentally or people who I describe as unable to be part of the adult conversation because mm. of who they are, how they are, and my decision that I have to go by the book with them. But it is a very challenging conversation we've had. And I do think the truth is generally better than the lie and certainly, like you alluded to, easier to keep track of. So. Mm. What I want to do for these guys, Lauren, mm -hmm. if they can handle the truth, mm -hmm. I want to send them to your website, Excellent. which they can find at mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N. And what are they going to find when they get there? Uh, inner you. They're going to find my website. They're going to find that I teach lots of classes um, through InterU, which is my digital program. And then I'm for hire, but I'm expensive. Um, and then we have coaches. I have a coaching body of people that do what we call the handout method. Very good. Very good. Well, Lauren, it's great to have you back. We should do this more often because the show last time was great. This one is fantastic. And won't you come back soon? I would love to. And Maybe if we're both lucky, I will get on a plane and go have an excuse to see you in Croatia because it's been 12 years since I've been there and I'm thinking that's way too long. I think you should come back. It's, it's fantastic here. It's fantastic. Well, I'm telling the truth. I want to be there again. I miss Europe in general. And then I really do love having guests. So you can bring your wife. I, she sounds great. And I'm not lying. You know what I do? When people invite me to things, I say, can I bring my cute little girlfriend? And they go, wait a minute, I thought you were married. I go, I am. Well, then oh. what are you talking about? Oh, well, my wife is my cute little girlfriend. Nothing's changed. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Lauren. Fantastic Thank stuff. You. Right on. Thank you. And gentlemen, if you haven't been to mountaintoppodcast.com lately, download the book, Sticking Points Solved. You'll get on my mailing list. I send an email message to guys every day. And listen, this isn't just some big sales pitch. I give you content you can use to get better with women, be a better man every day when you sign up for my newsletter, which you can do from mountaintoppodcast.com. While you're there, please also check out our sponsors, Jocko Willink's company, Origin in Maine, Hero Soap Company, which now has shampoo, by the way, and the keyport.com. They have just released a whole bunch of new attachments for your everyday carry device. So if you've already purchased a keyport in the past, you need to go to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash keyport and get you some because they have new face plates as always and new attachments and even new versions. All good stuff. All of our sponsors are well loved by you guys. They're all about making your life just a little bit manlier, right? And you can use the coupon code mountain10 with each and every one of our sponsors to get an additional 10% off. And until I talk to you again next time, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. 
this is Ed Roy Odom speaking for the Mountaintop Podcast.